In today's lesson, we're going to talk about multiplying binomials and trinomials. So those binomials consist of two terms, an expression that is two terms, so one like this right here, and a trinomial is one that has three terms. So your notes might look slightly different from what you're about to see, but all the content remains the same, so just follow along and fill in your notes. So the first thing we're going to talk about is when we multiply a binomial times a binomial. So what is that? Well, it's one, two terms, and I'm going to multiply it by one, two terms, another expression that has two terms in it. So I can use this acronym called FOIL. And the first in FOIL, right, it's an acronym. So the F, the O, the I, and the L, they all stand for something. And the F stands for first terms. Now, if I'm looking at this expression right here, and I'm reading it from left to right, the first terms in each binomial would be this 3x and this 2x. Okay, looking at it from left to right, outer terms, the O, the outside terms on the outside of my binomials, that's the 3x and the 1. What about the in inside terms? negative 5 and positive 2x. Remember, the sign in front goes with the term. And the last terms, if I'm reading from left to right, the last terms in each binomial, negative 5, positive 1. Okay, so when we multiply binomials, we can use this acronym FOIL. And all it makes sure that we do is we multiply every term in this binomial times every term in this binomial. Okay, lots of underlining, sorry about that. Okay, so here's how we do this. I'm gonna multiply the first term in my first binomial times the first term in the second binomial. So 3x times 2x is 6x squared. Now I'm gonna multiply the outer terms, 3x times one, that's positive 3x. Then I'm gonna multiply my inner terms, negative five, times positive two is negative, or positive two x, negative 10 x. Then my last terms, negative five times positive one is negative five. Awesome, we've done our multiplying, but we're not done. Now we need to combine like terms. So the first thing I do is identify my like terms and then I combine them by their coefficients. Positive three and negative 10, make negative seven, last name stays the same. So six x squared, I've combined these to make negative seven x and then I bring down this minus five. So when I multiply these two binomials, I get this trinomial down here, six x squared minus seven x minus five, it's written in standard form, we're good. So let's go on to our examples. Multiply each set of binomials using FOIL. So what I like to start out with when you're first multiplying is writing F-O-I-L. You won't need to write this the more you do this. You will probably get very, very good at this. So first terms, X times X. What is that? X squared. Last terms, or I'm sorry, outside terms, X times four is positive 4x. And I like to say positive or negative because that really becomes my operation in front of my term. So inside terms, inner terms, negative one times x is negative one x. Last terms, negative one times four, negative four. And then my next step is I need to combine like terms. So 4x and negative 1x are my like terms. I'm going to combine those. So my answer is x squared, and then I combine my like terms to get 3x plus 3x, then minus 4. And that's my answer. Let's do number two. F-O-I-L, FOIL. First terms, remember we're, le we're reading from left to right, so the first term in each expression is 4x times 5x. And I multiply those together and I get 20x squared. Now my outside terms, 4x times two is positive 8x. Now my inside terms, negative three times 5x is negative 15x. 
negative 3 times 2, last terms, negative 6. Are we starting to get the hang of it? Then I need to combine like terms. So I'm going to identify my like terms. It's these two numbers in the middle right here. Okay, 20x squared. And then when I combine those two middle terms, what do I get? Negative 7x or minus 7x, then minus 6. All right, let's go to the next one. Number three, F O I L. Okay, first terms, what would those be? 5x times 3x, 15x squared. Multiply your coefficients, then um, apply your product rule to your variables and their exponents. Outside terms, 5x times 2, positive 10x. Inside terms, 4 times 3x is positive 12x. Then your last terms, 4 times 2 is positive 8. I do find these, these arrows to be very helpful for a lot of students. So now we're going to combine like terms. Identify your like terms, 10x and 12x, and then rewrite it in standard form. So 15x squared, I didn't combine it with anything, but it doesn't go away. 10x and 12x makes 22x, then plus 8. And that's my answer. Let's move on to number 4. First terms, F, O, I, L. First terms, 7x times 2x. What is that? 14x squared. 7x times 1, our outside terms. Positive 7x, inside terms. Negative 3 times 2x is negative 6x. Last terms, negative 3 times 1, negative 3. And now we're going to combine like terms. These are my like terms. Anybody noticing a pattern? These like terms are in the middle. Okay. 14x squared. I'm not combining that with anything. 7x minus 6x, positive 1x. Do I need the 1 in front of my variable? No. Is it okay if I have it there? Sure, minus three. Let's go on to number five, F-O-I-L. If you start getting the hang of it, you really don't have to write F-O-I-L, but I always have students that really like writing it. Okay, F-O-I-L, first terms, x times negative two x is negative two x squared. Outside terms, x times nine is positive nine x. Inside terms, negative 5 times negative 2x is positive 10x. Last terms, negative 5 times 9, negative 45. Okay. Now let's combine like terms. 9x and 10x are my like terms. So negative 2x squared, when I combine 9x and 10x, I get positive 19x minus 45. Let's move on. Now, number six, what do you notice about number six? I have a 3x and a 3x is my first term. I have a 2 and a negative 2. So the same numbers, but one expression is a plus, one expression is a minus. Okay. All right. So let's still do FOIL because we're multiplying. F O I L. First terms, 3x times 3x is 9x squared. 3x times negative 2 is negative 6x. Inside terms, 2 times 3x, positive 6x. Last terms, 2 times negative 2, negative 4. When I combine like terms, well, what happens if I have a negative 6x and a positive 6x? They cancel each other out. That's zero. They go away. So I'm left with 9x squared minus 4. So in this case, I have those two middle terms cancel out, and I'm left with a quadratic binomial. Let's move on to number 7. What's new about number 7 that you haven't seen? I've got multiple variables in here, okay? But I still am multiplying a binomial times a binomial, so I'm still going to use FOIL, and I'm just going to apply my product rule. 
So first terms, 5xy times 10xy. That's 50 x squared y squared. Now my outside terms, 5xy times 7, positive 35xy. Now my inside terms, negative 1 times 10xy, negative 10xy. Then my last terms, negative 1 times 7, negative 7. So we did the same process. And now I'm going to combine like terms, 35xy, negative 10xy. Those are like terms. Same variables with the exponents, they're like terms. If I have like terms, can I combine them? Yes. So I've got 50x squared y squared. Then these are like terms. I can combine them to get positive 25. And then that, those variables and their exponents, I say the same when we combine. So 25xy minus 7. Let's move on to number 8. Again, I have two binomials, so I'm going to use FOIL. Again, I have multiple variables, though. Okay, they're just kind of in a different spot. But let's multiply our first terms. 4x times 3x, what is that? 12x squared. Outside terms. 4x times negative 7y, negative 28xy. Inside terms, 9y times 3x, positive 27xy. Last terms, 9y times negative 7y, negative 63y squared. And now let's combine like terms. What are my like terms? negative 28xy and positive 27xy. So again, I have that first term. The negative 28xy and positive 27xy combine to make negative 1xy. I'm just going to write negative xy minus 63y squared. Okay, let's move on to number 9. Number 9, I'm going to zoom in on number 9, okay? Because what's different about number 9? I have a binomial times a trinomial. I'm gonna show you two different methods for multiplying binomials and trinomials. You can use FOIL, or you can use the box method that I'm gonna show you. I find the box method to be really, really helpful for students who struggle with this multiplying, okay? So when I use the box method, I'm gonna draw a box. Since I have a binomial times a trinomial, I'm going to draw a box that's two by three, okay? This binomial right here, every term gets its own row. This trinomial right here, every term gets its own column. So 5x squared plus 7x plus 1, okay? Remember, sign in front goes with the number. So now I'm going to be multiplying, okay, each of these, and I'm going to write their product in that box. So this first one, 2x times 5x squared, that's 10x cubed. Next one, 2x times 7x is 14x squared. 2x times 1 is 2. The next row, negative 1 times 5x squared is negative 5x squared. Negative 1 times 7x is negative 7x. Negative 1 times 1 is negative one. So I've done all my multiplying. What do I do when I've done all my multiplying? I combine like terms. Okay, here's what I really like about the box method. 10x cubed. Can I combine it with anything? No. So it's just 10x cubed. Then what do you notice about these boxes that are diagonal from one another? Those are my like terms. If they're alike, can I combine them? Sure, negative 5x squared and 14x squared is positive 9x squared. And again, you know what I forgot? There should be an x right here. Boom. And that's another reason why I love the box method, because when I don't have like terms across from each other, I'm thinking, did I do that right? 2x times 1 should be 2x, and I forgot that x. But, you know, I just like to make these mistakes just to show you. I do it on purpose um, just so you can see how easy it is to make a mistake. I don't ever really accidentally make mistakes. I, it's always on purpose. So negative 7x 
plus 2x is negative 5x. And then here's the Lone Ranger all by itself, and I can't combine it with anything. So my answer here is a cubic polynomial. Let's move on to number 10. You can absolutely use that box method. And I have students that really like to use this box method when they're multiplying binomials. That works, I gotta do. It's a two by two, just draw a two by two box. We're gonna use FOIL though for number 10, because I'm gonna show you the other method when you're multiplying a binomial times a trinomial. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply this first term, three X squared, times every term in the second uh, polynomial, okay? So 3x squared times 4x squared is 12x to the fourth. Then 3x squared times x is positive 3x cubed. Then 3x squared times negative 2 is negative 6x squared. Okay, now I'm going to take the second term in this first binomial, and I'm gonna multiply it by every term in the second polynomial. So one times four x squared is four x squared. One times x is one x or just x. One times negative two is negative two. And now that I've done all my multiplying, what do I do at this point? I combine like terms. Okay, 12 x to the fourth, can I combine it with anything? Nope. 12x to the fourth. 3x cubed, can I combine it with anything? Nope. 3x cubed. Negative 6x squared, can I combine it with anything? Sure. Positive 4x squared, what is that? Negative 2x squared. Then I have this plus x, and then I have this minus 2. And that concludes your notes over multiplying binomials and trinomials. I hope it was helpful.